Mbeki talking about the South Africa embarking on a major public works and job creation drive in response to the coronavirus crisis, among other structural challenges. President Cyril Ramaphosa unveiling a plan today to return Africa's most industrialized economy to growth. Under pressure after data showed the largest ever gross domestic product contraction in the second quarter, the plan hopes to unlock more than one trillion rand in investment over the next four years and create more than 800 jobs. Nkuseli Jack from the Citizens Against Corruption Forum joins us now to talk about whether or not the plan does deal with South Africa's social ills. A very good uh, evening to you, Mr. Jack, and thank you so much for speaking to us. So the president said, despite these vital interventions, however, the damage caused by the pandemic is to an already weak economy, to uh, employment, to livelihoods, to public finances and uh, uh, state companies has been colossal. Is this the plan that will remedy all of these challenges, especially in the short term? Well, unfortunately, uh, there are certain things uh, that are for the short term. However, most of the things that the president talks about are generally medium to long term. Uh, basically, uh, the issue, the points that I think that could move fast is the area of tourism. Uh, you know, what's, if he could do that, and also the other thing that uh, that can be uh, done is the reduction in the cost of doing business, as he talks about it, the boosting export, etc., etc. Those are things that can happen quickly. However, the others really are long term. And the unfortunate thing also is the fact that these things have been raised so many times before, <laughs> to the extent that the talk of infrastructural development as, as a way to lead growth is something like... Uh, uh, you know, like chasing a mirage in South Africa as things stand. So, as I mentioned, there's a large infrastructure build program that's been announced. So, the housing, water and rail sectors have been identified as pivotal to this. But they've also been subject to corruption scandals. How do we invite investments in these sectors when there's been mismanagement and lack of adherence to regulations? As we've seen, state capacity has been exposed uh, as being lackluster, if uh, uh, non-existent in some cases. First of all, the these things to happen, all right, you're going to need credible leaders at every point, all right? And then you're going to have to have efficient administration. That does not deviate to basic administrative uh, uh, principles and rules, which is one of the biggest problems that have destroyed our country, is this thing of uh, changing the rules or changing the goalposts to suit uh, individuals rather than making the individuals step in and fit into what needs to be done. Okay? Now, the, 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 the housing project, I see there's about, I, I can't remember, 18 or so that the president spoke about. Yes, that is also another uh, project that can also speed up the employment and uh, to inject a lot of money into the economy, which is needed. What we need now is a uh, projects which are labor intensive and they are going to use a lot of absorb a lot of unemployed people that will be quick to take the load off from the fiscals if we do that but if we don't do that we continue to do the games that we have been doing in the past then uh, we must forget about it but i, I mean Again, I go back to the point that I was making. So if you are going to deal with a lot of these problems, you need direct measures. But we've seen that some of those uh, measures have failed, those direct measures, uh, a lot of them uh, falling victim to uh, criminality in terms of the levels of mismanagement, as we mentioned. And just even the, the sheer distribution of sources, resources, that has been lacking. So will this ultimately deal with the dire consequences uh, that have been wrought on the lower income strata of society? Well, look, I mean, as you know, the Umzim Vubu Dam, which has been <laughs> spoken about, actually, this is a project that was supposed to have taken place in 1962 uh, uh, by the Fervut regime then. And our successive governments in the new order have always brought it on the table whenever these national speeches are made. Nothing is being done about that. I mean, that project, its impact 
on the economy of this province, or it could be so important, for example, for the Eastern Cape, if that could happen, okay? And it must be done by people who are qualified to run such projects. And the good news also is that the president also said that he's going to relax the visas for highly skilled foreigners. It is important that in this country, at this point in time, that we do recruit people if we don't have the necessary and the required skill in our land. We take it from anywhere in the world and we build our country. Whilst building it, we develop our own people to continue with that. You see, otherwise, if we don't do that, we're going to be talkers as we are uh, starting now to be known as, uh, instead of being implementers, all right? So I think that the president is running a risk of uh, discrediting himself unless he start to roll out a visible okay. economic activity in the country where we will see cranes all over the place rather than uh, that the economy of the country as it may look now is only Johannesburg or, or Gauteng focused. You see? All right, thank now, you very you must, much. Uh, uh, must Mr. Kuselicek from the Citizens Against Corruption Forum, thank you very much for speaking to us.